Hey there, it's Patty Sampson. How are you? Um, well, it's been a while since I've done a recording for Lion Dusk, and you're probably saying, well, Patty, why are you doing recordings for Lion Dusk when you have your own CRM right now? Well, the answer to that is that I have um, actually done a ton of training for agents in the past in Lion Dusk, and I know a lot of you are still there. I was, was and still am a huge supporter of Lion Dusk. A bottom line is I went off and started my own, but I've gotten a lot of questions from people that have worked with me in the past who are still with Lion Desk and, um, and some new people that are coming in from Lion Desk that want some help. So today, this video, I'm going to show you how to create a drip campaign in version two of Lion Desk. And, um, so, you know, because I'm a huge supporter and I've been training in all different types of CRMs, not just Lion Desk, by the way. Um, this is my gig. This is what I do. I am uh, passionate about drip campaigns. So uh, let's start at the beginning. Um, if you were in version one, uh, version two is a little different. In fact, it's quite different on how you set up the campaigns. So I want to just kind of walk you through a little bit of the difference um, as we're going through it. There are some things that are different and missing from version two than version one had. Uh, so if you are in a campaign, maybe that's got, if you had originally started in version one and you want to move over to version two, some of the campaigns that you have, um, whether or not you built them yourself, or maybe you got them from me in the past may not be working in version two anymore because of some of the scheduling options that are no longer available. So I just wanted to kind of go through some of that with you today. And, um, first of all, let's just talk about creating a campaign. We're just going to start from scratch pretty much. Um, I think I'm going to end up making this two uh, videos because it might be longer. Uh, I really don't want to go too long with either of these videos. So I'll have a part one and then I'll have a part two if that's okay with you. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is when anytime you're making a drip campaign, and it doesn't really matter which CRM you're in, you have to start with the templates. So you have to create those. And if you haven't already got those, then you need to go in and start getting that done first. That's step number one. And the templates in this case are going to be email templates and text templates. And uh, assuming you've paid for upgrades within Line Desk, uh, you want to make sure that you have more than a hundred texts because if you're, you know, in, um, on either a free version, if you're watching this, Maybe you got it through your MLS or um, your association, or maybe your brokerage is giving it to you. You want to be sure you've got enough text because usually on the free version, you only get about 100 text total. <laughs> so I have found from training agents, uh, they start look, sending out the campaigns and then here we go. You only have 100 texts. After a while, you don't send any text at all and you don't even realize you're not sending any because you ran out. So you want to make sure that you've gone up to your um, profile settings. Let me move my face out of the way. Go over to your profile settings and have upgraded to get some more text because when you come in on those free or the cheaper versions, you have only a, a hundred total. That's total. That's not even a month. So make sure that you get in and upgrade and you'll just do that over here in, um, in the area here where you can uh, add more stuff. So check into all that if you need to do it. So just be sure before you get started. Same thing with your emailing because I don't know how many people you have, but you might want to upgrade to get more emails and stuff like that. So that's step number one. All right. So we're going to head over to the campaign tab, which is right here. And then we're going to go and focus on the templates. Now, obviously, you know, I've got a bunch of templates and things already in here. So you're going to see a bunch already written in here that I have. By the way, I do share them in the published campaigns area. So if you're interested, just go up there. Um, there is a, a fee for them, but they're pretty affordable. And uh, if you need to reach out to me, send me an email at patty, P-A-T-T-I, at exposedagent.com. Um, it is August 2020 right now, and I'm in the process of upgrading my uh, consulting website where I sell these things. So if you are seeing this before that's done, just email me at patty with an I at exposedagent.com. Anyway, so a uh, bunch of templates already made, so maybe you don't even care about making them. <laughs> you want to just take the ones that I have. Uh, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and create a new template. So the first thing I suggest you do before you do anything else is go and create a folder so that you can um, have folders for your stuff. So I would suggest that you call it your name so or your initials or something. So I'm going to go ahead and put my initial in here 
And I'm also going to call this buyer, uh, I'm going to call them buyer emails. So you can find them quicker. I don't really need it. Uh, I don't really need a uh, description because I know what it is. So that's what I'm going to suggest you do is you set up folders. So if we're going to start with, uh, I'm going to do it again and I'm going to go buy or text. This way they're going to be easier to find later. So you, and, and you'll put them in those folders as you're, as you're building them. And if you're going to do a seller or whatever you're building, set up folders for buyers and sellers and tenants or whatever you have so you can find it easier later. Actually, I'm going to drag myself over here. I like being on screen because I feel like I need to be talking to you, so <laughs> otherwise I take my face off. All right, next, let's go and start by building a new template. So we're going to go here, and the first thing we're going to do is maybe buy your email one. Now, I would suggest that uh, you have a plan. So anytime you're going to write a campaign, you want to make sure that you've got a campaign to handle all of your leads. Well, let's face it, we're realtors. I'm a realtor, a top producing agent. Um, I, now my whole focus is helping people to, you know, close more deals um, through better automation and better follow up. But um, bottom line is, you're they're either going to be buyers or sellers mostly. So if you can create templates from the start that are going to be specific to all buyers, all sellers, and then try to reuse them in different campaigns, that's what I'd suggest if you can. Now. If you build a campaign up, and most of our campaigns should be at least a year long, if you're getting new leads, especially if they're online, then you really want to be sure that um, you've got a good solid buyer campaign, and then you can always take that campaign and like, make a copy of it and make it more specific to your ad offers, or, or maybe an open house, or maybe you know whatever you're doing to generate leads. You should have a campaign for every single ad source or lead source that you have. I could go on for hours about why you should do that, but bottom line is, is one of the reasons we don't do very well with our follow-up is because we're really crappy at writing that content and using canned stuff that in every case, they're all the same. So what you don't want to do is go out and spend money on a Facebook ad where you're offering a list of homes, but that list of homes then is never sent to them. So you have to have a campaign ready for that ad. Simply put, just create a good buyer campaign and at the beginning of the campaign, you're going to stack it with the information that the people signed up for. And all you got to do is clone the campaigns so or copy the campaigns if you can. Um, in, in our case, you can do that in here if you want to do it. I'm not going to get into all that big detail right now on how to create one from an existing campaign because I'm here to show you how to create new ones. So the first thing is, is creating your templates. So uh, make sure that you make a description on here that's going to make more sense for you. So let's just say this campaign is going to be for a brand new online buyer lead. So maybe you're doing a Facebook ad. So you could even call it Facebook buyer. And then um, I would go buyer email one. That's what I would do. And then say uh, a new registrant, right? Let's call it something so we know what it is. I would highly also recommend that at this point, if you want to start putting time schedule in here, this might help you too. And I'm just going to call it day, I, I already know, well, I could call it day zero. So let's do this, day zero. This is going to help you when you go to build the campaign later because everything is going to be in here in order. In fact, if anything, you could also do this where you put the number at the start because I think they're all going to be in here alphabetically. But if you... Uh, I, I, I'm just going to leave it like this for right now because I don't want to screw myself up. But I could go Facebook 1, so maybe I do that. In fact, you could go Email 1 if you want to do that. Start here. Uh, yeah, this should probably work fine because it's going to end up, I think, showing up in the folder alphabetically. So if you can find them in order, that would be the way to go. But I'm going to put Day 0 on here because that will help me later in, when I'm referencing. Now i got to put it somewhere. And I just built that folder, and I have so many folders in here. So let's see if I can go down and find it. What did I call that? It was PNS. That's my initials. I'm going to go down to PNS. This is going to be an email, so I'm going to just put it right in that folder. And then this is going to be an email, so the template type is going to be an email. Cool. Next, we're going to go, and honestly, you know what's funny? Because I don't know if I can make this bigger. Uh... I don't think it can. It's kind of tough. Anyway, and my vision's getting worse by the minute. <laughs> so, all right, subject line. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you about subject lines. I'm a big fan of putting in the um, field for uh, for 
their first name. So right here, you can say insert Lion Desk content. So I'm going to say go right here and insert their first name. I'm just a big fan. It catches their eye. You could also put a custom field in if you want to add custom fields. But I like putting the consumer's first name in there. And I'm going to say something about thanks um, about your uh, about your home search on Facebook. How about that on Facebook? I'm making this stuff up, but this is what I do in my sleep. So the first thing is, is we want to say thanks for signing up on Facebook. Um, and now we're going to do somewhat the same thing. I'm going to go high and put their name in there again. And this is inserting the fields. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to just put their first name in, contact first name. Now something to know about this, if you're doing a Facebook ad, usually the, the names, and it's a lead form type ad, uh, the names will automatically load into those lead form ads. Um, if, you're, you, if you're sending them out to, say, a lead page or a listing to leads or some other landing page where they have to fill it out, there's a chance that the email, I'm sorry, that the first name is going to show up not so good. Uh, so you got to be sure that you get in here as soon as possible and clean it up. So for instance, Zillow is kind of well known for people filling out the forms and the first names are not very good. Sometimes you're going to get unknown. There'll be nothing there. It might be an email address. It's not going to be good. So keep in mind, depending on your lead source, you may not want to put their first name in the first stuff that goes out of here because if you've got to come in and clean up the first name, give it a couple days so that you have time to come in and do that. So that what that means is on the first couple of emails and texts, don't put their first name in there. If you know that that lead source is notorious for bringing in, uh, for lack of a better term, crappy first name content. And so give yourself some time. That all being said, though, I would totally be making sure that I come in here and do put the first name in after the first few days and get in here every day and check to clean your database up. And it's an ongoing process cleaning that database up. So now, ideally, you've got somewhere where you've created this um, campaign. And I would camp create it in a Word document or something or Excel spreadsheet, whatever you want, and copy and paste the content in instead of you sitting here writing it. Now, I am not going to be doing any of that right now. I'm just showing you the basics. Uh, so I'm just going to say thanks for um, requesting home listing information from me uh, for Scottsdale Homes, right, or something along those lines. Below is a link to access the list, uh, the beautiful list of homes, okay, beautiful list of homes. Um, if these homes don't fit your need, if these homes don't fit your needs, please be sure to let me know and I can fine tune your search. Okay, let me know and I can fine tune your search. Now, here's what I always do. Calls to action. We can go into a whole thing about how you should write your content and I have a whole, I have lessons all over out there. So go to YouTube, look me up, just type my name in, Patty Sampson YouTube. <laughs> in fact, if you're here, you're probably on YouTube. I've got all kinds of training out there on, on the best ways to write your campaigns and um, you can also go to uh, Exposed Agent or Engage More CRM and see some more training over there. But um, definitely figure out you got to have a call to action. So before you click the um, link, can you take a quick moment and uh, and let me know? Are you um, planning to purchase soon, or are you just browsing? Let's see if we can get an answer out of them. Okay. Let's get something out of it. Now, here's what I would do. A uh, new Scottsdale, let's see, or, uh, let's see, Scottsdale Homes for Sale Today, right? I'm going to do that. I'm going to go over to my website. Now, right now, I've got a lot of websites, so I'm just going to go over to one of mine. Uh, let's just go here and see. And I'm going to, ideally, honestly, I would have a page set up already for this between me and you. I would totally have a page set up, but I, I don't, um, I'm not really, I haven't really done a ton of that on some of my sites, 
But I'm going to go ahead. Here's one of my sites. I'm just going to go over to my Scottsdale page here at AZ, at AZ Excellence Team, where I'm at at EXP. Now, you can't see this, but I'm going to copy the URL that's up at the top. See, there's already a bunch of um, search results here. Ideally, you're going to go to your site and actually um, create a page for it and put some tagging and all that stuff. Again, I got training all over the place out there on how to do this. So go look for it. But grab the URL for the page. All right, now we're going to go back over to our thing. And I'm going to go ahead and just put a um, highlight that and, a, and turn it into a hyperlink right here, right? So something to know is that you always want to try to have links in your, in your um, emails if you can, uh, if you can, because when people click, that's a hot buying sign. Lion Dust does give you some reporting information about that. Um, it's not as dynamic as I'd like to see it, but they do give you some. And so it's, it's just uh, ideally on your dashboard, you'll see when people are clicking, they don't create a full list for you, but they do give you a, a little list, a little mini list. <laughs> Okay, so give put a link in there. All right, now you're going to put your signature line. Another thing I'm not going into is that you need to be sure you've got your profile signature line set up. And now you don't have to reinvent that wheel. You're just going to go here into your Lion Desk fields and go down and add in the field for your email signature. So it'll pull it up. So what's nice about, whoops, you got to make sure and hit return. That would be good. What's nice about that is that if you decide to change your signature lineup, it'll pull in the new one uh, anytime you change it. And you don't have to go into all your templates and change it because that's a real pain. Nobody wants to do that. I know, I know I wouldn't. Okay, so let's see. Now you can't see, but there's a save button down here. So I'm going to just say I'm done with this one. I'm going to save the template. Now, one of the things you could do is go in and advance and um, create like a blank template so you can just keep pulling that one up and using it and resaving it. But I'm not going into all that. I'm just showing you there's 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 ways to hack and cheat to get stuff done quicker. Uh, and I'm a fan of hacking and cheating to get stuff done quicker because I'm I'm lazy. <laughs> I always tell people uh, my laziness made me efficient and my efficiency made me money. <laughs> So that, that, that's exactly what happened. Um, that's why I'm the drip campaign queen because I just want, don't like reinventing a wheel. All right, so we're going to do another template. In this case, we're going to do a text template.